All right, now to our first conversation. Now, as E-Niger has reached a significant milestone with the successful launch of its first uh, domestic dollar-denominated bond, drawing over $900 million in subscriptions. Uh, this uh, $500 million bond, orchestrated by the Africa Finance Corporation, represents a crucial advancement in Nigeria's economic growth and underscores the increasing confidence in its uh, capital market. Now to uh, discuss uh, Nigeria's uh, debt stock and expectations after the August U.S. CPI data. Um, that's for the U.S. Uh, we have joining us Ugo Dre, uh, which was a founder, Naira Metrics. Joining me via Zoom. Great to have you on the show. Hey, same here, Lani. How are you doing? I'm fine. So, so much excitement about this um, raise, um, oversubscribed by 180%. How are you seeing it? Um, any risk to be worried about? Well, I mean, uh, it's a sovereign debt, so risk is not as uh, elevated as, yeah, I mean, you would have thought if it wasn't, if it was maybe a corporate, corporate bond. Uh, Nigeria, I think, is in a good place when it comes to uh, its public debt. Uh, I mean, bear in mind, we do have about 40, 43 or 40, so 43 or so billion dollars in, in, in foreign debt at the moment. Um, a lot of our rates are, you know, relatively okay. Uh, even the space, you know, when repayment for some of these debts are meant to happen, it's uh, fairly, uh, you know, well spaced. So not a lot of risk there. Uh, not also surprised. Uh, Ugo Dre is frozen there, but he was uh, uh, making a, a sense about can the risk. Can you hear me? All right, I can hear you now. Yeah, you can, you can carry on. Okay, I okay, lost okay, you for okay, a moment, right. but you're back. Right. All right, all right. So I said, I'm not surprised that it was it was highly oversubscribed. Uh, a lot of Nigerians do have a lot of FX uh, deposits in their bank accounts. Uh, I mean, obviously, for for obvious reasons, uh, people don't want to you know be that exposed uh, to a weakening naira, and so and a lot of that money are just stashed in banks doing nothing, and so. Uh, with a yield of nine point, you know, seven five percent or coupon of nine point seven five percent, I think was a good deal. So not no surprises there, laddie. No surprises. All right. And of course, I don't see any imminent risk. All right. I, I guess um, good deal, you know, according to you. But um, you know, we still keep talking about Nigeria's um, debt stock. Um, how much will this uh, impact our current state when it comes to debt stock? Yeah. So I mean, like I mentioned, I think in terms of. Uh, Total external debt stock. I think we have about forty-three or so billion dollars uh, external debt stock. That's as at as at March uh, twenty twenty-four. Uh, could be slightly higher um, by the time the NB, the uh, DMO releases its, its latest numbers. And so, not a lot of uh, you know impact. It's just uh, nine hundred million dollars, uh, assuming that they they accept the entire subscription. Uh, so, not that much. And so, I don't also see. Uh, a lot of that's why I said I don't see a lot of risk in here at all. It seems relatively okay that we're having this sort of um, uh, we're seeing Nigerians at least subscribing uh, both locally and in diaspora. So nothing to worry about uh, for now. Now, where I do get worried though is uh, our ability to meet some of these obligations, say three, four, five years from now. Uh, and of course, that depends on how well we're able to manage a lot of our resource issues. Uh, be it uh, our ability to export out of the country. I think that's that's where uh, I'll be a little worried. Like right. And I was speaking with my guest um, yesterday, and we did talk about how much the Naira has been devalued in the past, um, say, five years. And I uh, would say it lost about 500% um, value in that space. And um, definitely, the, I, I, I'm wondering if there's a relationship between you know rising debts and the strength of your currency. Uh, rather, I mean, there, there would always be a relationship, but I think the relationship to me is when you have large physical de deficits, as we're currently running, uh, you do know we have large physical deficit, despite the fact that we're seeing government revenue uh, increase of late, but we're still running a very large physical deficit economy. And so long as you continue to run a large physical deficit economy, then uh, there's always risk that your currency uh, can be devalued uh, or will, be, will continue to be under pressure. And of course, uh, the fact that we're even borrowing also suggests uh, you know, also buttresses why we're la running large fiscal deficit. Uh, if we're running a large fiscal deficit, we won't be borrowing anyway. So you borrow just to plug this deficit. Now, the, the flip side is that because you're borrowing in dollars, I think the conventional uh, uh, impression people have is that that sort of feeds into the central bank's uh, ability to defend the Naira. 
uh, or at least provide liquidity in the FX market, which is which is possible. But that doesn't know we that doesn't take away the fact that you're running large deficit. And of course, uh, bond buyers know this, and so. Uh, what can start to happen is that as they see your physical, uh, you know, uh, side and see check whether you're actually physically responsible, how you're able to generate enough revenues to pay, uh, you know, government expenditure, then that determines the kind of rates that they can give you going forward. And so that that potentially is where uh, I would, you know, probably turn my searchlight on. Uh, but in terms of uh, the currency weakness, I think that you will continue to see a lot of the pressure that we've been seeing of late. Uh, that's because as a country, we're still not generating enough uh, export revenue. A lot of the mixes, a lot of the forex that we're seeing at the moment, at the moment is largely uh, foreign portfolio induced. And so uh, nothing that organic yet. Uh, and of course, we are still very much exposed to what's happening in the foreign markets. You're seeing what's happening with oil prices, uh, crude oil prices under pressure. So everybody has one eye on that. And when you have crude oil prices uh, falling the way it is, then that obviously puts the exchange rate, exchange, puts exchange rate stability at risk. So, uh, so Ladi, you know, by and large, I do think that, um, yes, as much as it's a good thing that we ha- we're seeing, uh, FX coming through um, um, insurance of um, uh, you know foreign foreign debts or foreign bonds, as, as the case may be, uh, we still have that issue of fiscal deficit, and to me, that is probably the biggest problem we have uh, facing our FX our ability to stabilize our forex markets. Right, and you know you did mention um, uh, imports there and uh, trade, and looking at our recent trade data, we're seeing you know exports exceeding imports. Uh, this time, I know we've all been clamoring for uh, for us to, you know, improve our exports and get imports lower. So we're seeing that happen now. But is this the one to be excited about? Yeah, it is. I mean, you always want to have a trade surplus uh, um, when you're looking at your trade data. And I think we've seen two consecutive quarters of, of improved trade surplus, uh, albeit pretty easy to understand why uh, we're seeing a lot more. Um, you know, crude oil exports value wise, not that, uh, in terms of actual crude numbers are it's increasing, but in terms of value of, of the crude oil exports that we're getting, the numbers are, are, are of course, increasing, um, uh, factor in exchange rate. And you can understand uh, why, uh, but Ladi, on the other side, you're also still seeing an increase, uh, in things like, uh, you know, petroleum imports. Uh, in, increasing the value of petroleum imports. Um, you know, from what we saw, we've seen the highest ever uh, second quarter for petroleum imports in Nigeria in terms of import bill. Uh, so that is also uh, pressure. And of course, if you also look at the mix of exports that we're doing, still not, uh, still heavily reliant on crude oil exports. Uh, so whilst it's good that we're seeing trade surplus, very good, don't get me wrong, uh, but that is that doesn't tell the entire, the entire, the entire story. Uh, most of the exports you're seeing are crude related. And of course, you also have uh, a lot of people not also still being able to import uh, because of, uh, you know, the cost of importation, uh, factor in FX, factor in purchasing power of Nigerians. And of course, if you, if you go to supermarkets today or even go to regular shops out there, like, you're pretty sure a lot of the things you, you tend to see a lot, you know, in, in aisles, you don't see them anymore in supermarket aisles because people really can't afford to import that much. And so that would obviously feed into the trade data that you're seeing. But, I mean, uh, economists will tell you that's the whole idea around trying to, uh, you know, implement um, an FX regime that is not subsidized whatsoever. Uh, let, uh, you know, let the market decide how, you know, what sort of, um, uh, you know, products Nigerians want to buy, whether it be preferred, uh, imported products or local, or local products. And then uh, so that you don't start to subsidize uh, aspects of the economy that don't need, uh, you know, being subsidized. So right. uh, to me, yes, the numbers were good, good trade surplus. Uh, we should expect more of that. But you want to see a lot more. Uh, you want to see that export mix uh, go beyond the relying just on crude. You want to see more products being exported out of Nigeria. Right. I guess currency devaluation will humble your taste for, you know, imported goods uh, with what we're seeing uh, from that data. Well, thank you so much. It was great having you, Godre, with your co-founder, Narametrics. Thank you. A pleasure.